Um, good morning, everyone. We'll do this in English, okay? It's okay for everyone? Good. Um, I'm here to present you the Orange Room uh, program. So today we have to start off how custom elements are changing the game with Juan Teixeira and José Sancho. Hello. Hello, good morning. Uh, we're very excited to be here. We're going to talk for about uh, 30 minutes about how custom elements are changing the game. Um, and then, oh, I'm missing the Quaker, <laughs> sorry. Uh, my name is Ron Teixeira. I'm from uh, Jumia Travel. I'm a web engineer there. I'm José Sanz, also a web engineer at Jumia Travel. If you guys are unsure, I'm the one holding the monkey. I, I don't have one, no. <laughs> this is the agenda for this talk. We're going to start with a little introduction on web components, what they're made of. Uh, we're, then José is going to jump to Polymer and show you guys a little demo. And finally, we will... Thank you for coming. All. Yeah. <laughs> so guys, uh, let's start off. Um, let's start with going just a little back to the past. Uh, we are going, we're going to travel to, to the future, or past to the future, to the 90s. And let's think uh, a little bit how we were uh, building uh, web pages uh, in those glorious times. Probably most of you remember those nice GeoCities web pages. Uh, as a developer, we had a, a pretty fine set of custom uh, of uh, HTML tags that we were able to just grab, put together to define our web pages. If we think a little bit more, this is exactly what we still do today, right? To define our own um, web documents. But also as engineers, uh, it's cool to have this predefined set of uh, HTML tags, but we always think a little bit uh, out of the box. We want to do uh, more custom things, uh, have our own ideas. So we always try to find tricks to, uh, to actually uh, do more with the multimedia and stuff like that. So we jumped to other technologies like Flash. Uh, we use iframe and Ajax. But do we still need to do those tricks today? So this is Juan. We'll be talking a little bit more about something completely new. So, with innovation in mind, we developers try every day to improve the way we work, to be more efficient, to be more practical in our approaches. And as developers, while building any kind of web application with considerable scale, we want to be able to reuse the, the same logic and interface we, we put through, throughout the app. And that's why we divide our application into smaller and more manageable pieces. Because as we know, if we divide big, a big problem into smaller problems, it will become easier to solve them. And that's why we divide our application into components. Components gives us reusability. They must be easily reusable in the same or in other projects. We should easily be able to have one or more instances of the same component in the same app. They give us composability. It should be possible to create more complex components or even entire applications uh, from a collection of components. They give us encapsulation. A component should be a self-living organism, completely separate from the main application. This will increase, of course, reusability and composability. But this is not a new concept. We have been using this for, 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 for years. Nowadays, this can be achieved by relying on these awesome JavaScript frameworks capable of providing this kind of abstraction. They allow us to build big complex things out of smaller, less complex things. And this is great because the web itself never really provided us with a clear way of doing this. Never really provided us how to actually design and build our own components. And, but as we know, the web, it's always evolving. It's an ever-evolving platform. So it never stops evolving. <laughs> and we had some epic battles throughout the years. We had Flash versus HTML5. Flash had the multimedia capabilities, 
but the platform itself was missing those features. So HTML5 brought them along, and because we needed standards and low-level OBIs, they provided us with those multimedia capabilities right inside the platform. Or even a simpler case of the date picker plugin versus the input with type date, which will open the platform's date picker. And from this constant evolution, the web components were born. Web components are just a response for a common need. It's the web platform evolving once again. Web components gives us standardization. Without standards, there is chaos. Is each man from, for himself. Standards gives us security, reliability, and compatibility. We want our components to have the same behaviors on all vendors. Web components gives us interoperability. Your components can transcend frameworks. They can be used in multiple projects of different technology stacks. And because of that, they will probably have a bigger lifespan. That said, let's take a look at the web component spec. The web component is just an umbrella term for the following four web APIs. HTML templates, Shadow DOM, custom elements, and HTML imports. But we'll, we'll go one by one just to see how they help us build a web component. The HTML template. This is where we're going to define our reusable code. In its most simple terms, it's just a tag where you can put your HTML in it, and nothing will be rendered. The browser will parse that information, but nothing will be rendered. You can have, for example, an image tag that the browser will not fetch that image, or even a video with autoplay in it that the browser will not play it. it it's code that will not be visible for our users. For example, let's imagine we are building a social website with many user profiles, and we want to build the same user profile for every single one of them, and we, we want to be able to reuse that code. So what can we do? We create our template tag with what, with what markup uh, profile should have. We then stamp it with a little bit of JavaScript. We just fill out the user's name. We clone the template, fill out the user's name, and then just append it to the document. Easy as that. Simple, but yet powerful. Shadow DOM. This, this is the API with the coolest name. It provides DOM and CSS encapsulation. This makes, DOM, this makes Shadow DOM a key block for web components. So let's say you're building a component for a big application, and you want it to look a certain way. You design it that way. But if your application CSS is not carefully organized, the style will leak into your component, and we don't want that. We want that that, uh, that the, the, the component itself will not, be, uh, uh, put, that will not be affected by the global style. So that's where Shadow DOM shines. You get these boundaries where nothing can bleed in or bleed out. Your component will be completely encapsulated. And a cool fact is that the browser vendors have been using it for their own components, like the video tag you guys see right there. It uses Shadow DOM to encapsulate the, the elements in, inside it. Or even the input, the smaller input type range also uses Shadow DOM. And it's a proven concept that it works today because the browser vendors have been using it. And now we have those same abilities. So let's take, for example, our template we've seen before of our profile. And let's say that somewhere in our application, the quest profile was already defined. So this could be an issue because it may overwrite what we specified for our component. Without Shadow DOM, our component will be affected. It will have the background yellow. But with Shadow DOM, it will be completely encapsulated and will not be affected by the global style. Custom elements. They give us the ability to create or extend HTML. It's a standardized way of creating our own custom HTML. 
We could do this already with a little bit of JavaScript, but a big advantage are the lifecycle callbacks. We have the constructor whenever the custom element is created or upgraded. We have the connected callback whenever it's stamped to a document. We have the disconnected callback whenever it's removed from a document. And we have the attribute changed callback whenever the attribute has changed its value. This may not sound like much, but in combination with HTML templates and Shadow DOM, you get this amazing reusability, composability, and encapsulation, which are in fact the key building blocks for a great component. So, mashing everything up, let's build our user profile uh, from the, the, the template we had before. We start by creating the class user profile, which will extend the interface HTML element. And on the constructor, we will attach the Shadow DOM, then fetch our template, change the name of our user by getting the attribute of the, the, the name, then clone it and just append it to the Shadow DOM. Then we just need to re register the user profile uh, tag and associate it with the class we just created. And easy as that, you get a full encapsulated and reusable comp component in just a few lines of code. I, as you can see below, this is how you're going to use it from now on. Simple as that. And the last API of them all, it's HTML imports. Allows you to import your dependencies. Uh, you can add your web component to an HTML file and all its dependencies and just import it wherever you need it. And you're ready to go. You're ready for you to start using that component. But the question is, can we use it today? Uh, it's already stable in Chrome, Opera, and Safari. Firefox and Edge still need some polyfilling. But yes, we can start using it today. But using the platform today doesn't mean use only the platform. Yeah. Um. May I? Yeah. Thanks. Uh, so personally, I've been using web components for, for a while now. And I can tell you guys, uh, web components are really great. So you can uh, reuse and have all those abilities that Juan just talked about. And this is very powerful because you can share across platforms, across websites, across projects. But there's also another thing that I've learned about uh, web components. It is hard. Seriously, it is really hard to maintain. It's hard to understand each of those events when your attributes are changed to, to compose and to um, aggregate all the features that a web component has. So in order to simplify a little bit on our life, because as a web engineer, we are super lazy, and we don't want to work hard. We want to play hard. Um, I'm here today to talk about Polymer. And Polymer is a very slim library. It's very small. And the only purpose of Polymer is to make your life easy when you're building web components. Polymer will give you some nice features, like it will ease the registering of elements when you're composing a lot of elements. You, he has his own lifecycle callbacks that will manage the lifecycle callbacks, callbacks that your browser understands. And with these lifecycle callbacks, it also gives you the properties mutation observation. You will be able to understand where the value of your properties has changed so you can use them inside this data system. It has the Shadow DOM template management, which is easy to use. You don't have to actually uh, call for the Shadow DOM attached to your element, and etc. We'll be seeing that. And the data binding, which is part of the data system from Polymer, which we all love when we are talking about all other frameworks like Angular or React, the possibility to actually see in action the values of our attributes change. So I'm sorry because uh, the slide is dark and probably you won't see it clearly. But this is Juan's example uh, about uh, that small template for uh, the social media website. And this is um, how you build this custom element if you use the native platform. Uh, let's see how it changed when we use Polymer. So to start off, you need to actually import Polymer, which is up there. <laughs> uh, and you can wrap all this JavaScript code inside a DOM module uh, tag. This should be enough to be uh, still working uh, or properly working. With this, 
with this DOM module, Polymer will manage for you the, the shadow DOM uh, encapsulation. So the next step is actually to extend the Polymer.Element class instead of using the HTML platform uh, class. So with this, now you are able to use all the other features about the events, callbacks, and about the attributes properties. You, you have now available for you this uh, properties attribute where you can uh, declare all your attributes and you, be, you will be able to observe when the value of these attributes changes. So this will be uh, attached to the data system of Polymer. With this, you don't need any more than to uh, manage the template, so the Shadow DOM template. So this has become slimmer. We removed it. And with the fact that you have used the property, you don't need any more to actually look at the properties and to, do, to write your own JavaScript to understand if the properties has changed. You can simply, simply use them directly inside your template with this mustache-like um, syntax where the values will change when your attributes are changing. So if you look at the final uh, result, you can see that almost all JavaScript has gone, and it does exactly the same as it was doing previously. Finally, we just need, we can use the, the is property of your element to actually attach to the, to, the, to the platform, to the DOM. So Polymer is very powerful for you to create uh, custom elements, but you can go even further. You can even build entire applications around custom elements because a custom element can be, for instance, um, kind of front-end controller where you uh, orchestrate an entire application, one component uh, knows all and will put all components talking together. And this is possible because the team of uh, Polymer's team also gave us um, this very awesome uh, set of tools, which are, is basically an application, a client tool application that enables you to really fast start developing components, entire applications from templates, build your application, linting your application, or even test with the test suite that they, that they come if you do uh, unit testing for your components. If you look now, it's, it's really nice because we have been talking about this for a while and components and, uh, and it feels nice. But now let's look at a real world example. And us at Jumia Travel, last year we decided to rethink the way we were doing the web mobile on our own application. And we built this new uh, entire progressive web app, which later on to, today there will be a talk about this, um, for our own website because we were searching uh, a more reliable website, faster, and with less data consumption. And we built this entire progressive web app with web components all, about, all around Polymer, uh, which is a lot our, our work daily. Another curious fact, if you looked since Chrome 59, even Chrome is made with custom elements, custom elements done by um, all build with Polymer. You can check on your settings on your browser and you will see Polymer being imported to your browser. So today we decided to bring a, a small demo um, to show you how custom elements actually can be uh, used for you guys to use them, not only as like plugins, like to be understood, like jQuery UE plugins, where you define a nice calendar or stuff like that, but you can actually build components that are smarter. Components that can integrate with external services or components that can take care of the capabilities of your phone. So we built this application like in a few hours. Uh, it's not probably the best one, probably it has a lot of bugs, we're not sure really. Uh, and probably only works on Chrome. Uh, I encourage you all to, to, to take a risk at the Q&R code right there. Yeah. And, uh, and make, and make your own video right now, if you want to. And let's check what, uh, what it does. I need to pause this microphone because it's it, kind of it, it, it will all be deleted afterwards, so don't worry about uh, repercussions. So if we test this application to understand um, what it does and what are the abilities, uh, I'm going to just open it on my phone because I have a nice QR code.
because we define and we build custom elements not only to extend the, the power of the HTML but also the capabilities that you have on your devices. The fact that you can use the webcam, the sound, or even more, in this case, even uh, custom elements that go attached to, a, in this case, Firebase uh, live database where you will automatically update the data. And someone else should do that. Tell me. Yeah, well, tell me. Have fun, guys. So this is really uh, all that comes with custom elements and with a new way uh, to think a little bit more out of the box on how now we have a, this powerful API and we are free to be creative and to reuse and to share more um, our work. So we have this nice thank you slide that was on the agenda. Yay, which is great. So guys, thank you very much to be here. Now probably the Q&A uh, part, I think. Yeah. yeah. So questions, who has them? Hi. First of all, thanks for the presentation, very good. Um, so you talked about uh, one of the cool things about it, uh, custom elements and Polymer, is that they can be reusable across projects. And I want to ask you, if, if you, uh, to you guys if you felt the need to reuse components across different projects, and if so, what were the difficulties that you found regarding to theming capabilities and more visual stuff, not only logic, logical algorithms? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, regarding theming, we uh, in in Polymer we have uh, the the um, we can have a shared styles template, a shared styles CSS, which you can include uh, in your uh, in your uh, in your Polymer elements. So that takes kind of care of it. That's where we're going to define our global template solution. Our variables for our colors, our things we want it to be reusable throughout our, our components, our applications. If we felt the need to reuse the same component, uh, well, we want to, but right now we don't have that window to do it, but we will. We, we will grab the components we just uh, uh, created on our uh, application, on our mobile application, on our mobile experience, and we will uh, grab those components and put it on the, the desktop because uh, we, we are seeing that it will be easier to, 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 to go to desktop with those components as it will have more support there. And our, our market is a tough market. It's the sub-Saharan market, which it's re really tough regarding mobile devices. And it's working there, so it will work on desktop, and we will grab those components and throw them to the desktop application. It's just a matter of time we, before we do it, but we will. Hello. Hello. Um, a quick question. Um, is it possible to have, for instance, a thank you uh, component, or multiple thank you components um, having the same tag name, but with different implementations? Um, I, I don't know if you understood uh, the question. Hey, what, what, take, let's take, for example, you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Uh, let, let's uh, take, for example, the, the thank you uh, component yeah. right there. Uh, you are saying that if we 
can we re register the same component with the same name? The same name, but with m multiple implementations. For instance, let's say that I have made a thank you component in a repository, and for instance, my friend, my friend over here, he also has, has done the same, but with the same tag name. Is it possible to have the, the two components in the same application? No, I don't <laughs> think. No, uh, which is a kind of uh, self-explanatory because then the browser is unable to understand which one you're trying to use. Uh, I even go a little bit further telling you that currently, if you understand how the browser uh, processes and create the DOM tree, uh, while it's reading all the HTML tags and convert them on objects like the input HTML, uh, the input element, and etc., um, you could th think that maybe you could actually, instead of just extending the HTML object, you could extend the input element uh, or other elements. You cannot do that. Also, the only one that can be extended is the HTML element um, currently, which the specs don't, don't allow for now to do okay. it. Um, and this comes because of the type attribute, where uh, if you think a little bit about the input, where the same input could be type date, that uh, type, uh, I don't know, type range or type something else, and you try to extend that one. Um, in the future, the vendors can implement more types. You will need to also re-implement completely your components, which is probably not a good idea. So currently, uh, no, it's, I don't think it's possible. And when you define, because you need to define, there was this last line of JavaScript when you say uh, dot .define in the name of your element yep. and the instance of the element, you cannot define twice the same, um, the same ID. Okay. Um, following, following up, um, is there any sort of convention, uh, for instance, namespacing the, um, the component, the tag name in this instance, uh, allowing uh, multiple uh, instance by um, defining uh, a namespace, for instance, I could call um, moxie dot thank you and my friend over here could call foo dot thank you. Is that possible? Or, or is there any sort of convention around the community for this kind of uh, problem? Uh, the, the, the only rule for now, you're, you're saying about creating the, the, the name for the register, the, uh, the, the name? You just need the, to have in all of them the dash, the, da the is it called dash, 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 yeah, dash. <laughs> the thank you dash you, um, the thank dash you. Uh, that's the only rule for now because you don't want it to have conflicts uh, when HTML6 comes or something like that uh, because the, the, the vendors uh, himself uh, Use uh, only one wording for each uh, for each uh, element, so it's it's the only rule for now. I will recommend uh, you to use uh, some kind of namespace. On our applications, we have more than one uh, completely built around uh, custom elements. Our elements always starts with our namespace, horizontal line dash or whatever, something else. Uh, even if you want to share, you build a component, put on your repo, want to share on a node package or something like that, it's easier so it doesn't mix with other components that have the same name. Thank you. Anyone else? More questions? Feedback, ideas, sure. I have a nice one, I just remember. <laughs> uh, we need to make some time. Huh? Um, if you're curious, our the, the our mobile website that uh, was shown over there with the GIF animation. Uh, I don't know if you can just go back a little bit. I really love this cat. Uh, this guy over there. Uh, it's an application built with more than 200 uh, custom elements. So, don't. It, you can think that. Uh, Doing a lot can be complex, but it's possible. It's all about orchest orchestration and power. Have any questions, Juan? Yeah. What happens to the shadow dome at night? <laughs> <laughs> this is our internal shock. Does it disappear? On the shadow, there's no light. Yes. You can do a lot of jokes around this. Well. OK, no more questions? Are we good? Uh, thank you, guys. Wait, wait, wait. One more. One more. One more. One more.
oh, I was just running away. Just one, one simple question. I wasn't here when you started, uh, but could you please uh, speak me just a little bit about uh, your folder arch architecture? It, it is possible. Ah. Well, it's, it's very simplistic. Uh, this is a JavaScript application. Uh, you have like the, the front page, the index.html in the, in, the, in the route, in the, the root, sorry. Um, we have a source folder, maybe. Um, inside the source folder, I don't know really by, sh uh, by heart, but then you, you should divide, like, you, if you have components that are like data managers, or they are just managers, probably you're gonna have a folder like managers. And if you have others that are elements, just basic elements, like we have, for instance, the five stars, which is a, an element that just outputs from one to five stars, uh, you can put that on elements. Um, when you switch between pages, we don't call it pages because it's a single page application, we call them fragments, which comes from the Android um, technology. We put them inside the fragment folder and stuff like that. So I think there is no like any standard. Um, it, it, it comes from you to actually understand what each component does. And in my opinion, you should only do one thing. Um, and organize them by the type of work they do. And then you just include them when you need them. Um, I guess, yeah. OK, thank you. No more questions? Are we good? OK, thank you, Joao no, and you. Josette. Thank you.